Well, good morning and welcome. Good morning. No matter who you are or where you are on the journey of life, you are welcome here in God's house. And I'm so happy to see all of you who are here, and I hope that all of you who are at home celebrating Memorial Day or out and about celebrating Memorial Day are blessed today. And I know it's cold and rainy outside, but let's praise God that it isn't snowing <laughs> yet. <laughs> so it is Memorial Day. And it is that day when we remember the men and women of uniform in every level, every rank, every position, and all the men and women who supported the people in uniform who have passed. But I suggest that we also remember all of those men and women who have been fighting COVID and who have passed because of their service to the country. I suggest we look at the last 50 years or so, 60, 70 years, and remember the women and women who have given their lives for their country and the people who weren't in uniform. There have been many. I suggest we think about the 221 or 222 mass shootings this year. And all those people who lost their lives due to that. Let us remember. Let us pray for their hearts and minds and souls. Let us lift them up to God in prayer. Lord Jesus, Lord God, Father and Creator, Holy Spirit, we pray that you have accepted the souls of those who have passed in service of this country by wanton violence, in service of medicine and healing. Lord God, bless in each and every one of them. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. And now please join me in the invitation to worship. Online, you'll find it on the North Canaan Congregational Church Facebook page and on my Facebook page. Come into this household of the living God, the three in one. Gather in the wonder of the mystery that God has invited us to share in. Ascribe to the divine glory and strength. Ascribe to God the glory that is due. Worship the triune God in the beauty of holiness. Our Please join in singing or listening and appreciating holy, holy, holy. Number 277.
Holy, holy, holy indeed. God is holy and blessed, and we are blessed to be able to worship. Before we go into the opening prayers and such um, announcements, there will be a church meeting on the 13th of June. And I want to make sure that the online audience knows that as well as the in-person audience. Are there other announcements that should be shared with the online audience this morning? Then let us continue in prayer. Holy God, creator, redeemer, and spirit, within your very self, you model the beloved community. You are the wisdom within our hearts, the word who dwells among us, the spirit who calls us beyond ourselves. Let us know your presence here today in a new way, that we might celebrate your love. Go forth rejoicing in prophet Isaiah, saying, Here I am, save me. <clears throat> As heirs with Jesus, let us come to lay before God our sin and wrongdoings and lack of faith. Let us come with hearts that seek newness. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we acknowledge that too often we try to live not acknowledging the mystery of your being, even though you have shown us your truth. We allow ourselves to rest in our own uncertainties. We find ourselves unable or unwilling to embrace the love through which you sent Jesus to live among us. We take for granted the grandeur of your as creator, of Christ as redeemer, and of the Holy Spirit as ever present sustainer. Yet we do not live out the beloved community you desire for all. Forgive us, we pray, and help us give testimony to your love. In the name of Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. We trust in these promises that the triune God in each of its persons promises us newness of life, a gift of new birth. The divine trinity invites us to testify to its being as the foundation for reconciliation of all God's people and for creation. In these truths, we trust and give thanks. Thanks be to God. Now to the scriptures, and let me try to say a few things about the scriptures before we start the sermon. I'll probably start the sermon before we do the scriptures anyway, but you know. As I, I just like them so much. First, the Gospel of John. It is really interesting that this passage comes at the beginning after the money changers in the temple 
story. You know, in the other four or other three gospels, the money changers in the temple comes at the end of Jesus' ministry. This time it comes at the very beginning. And so that's outstanding. And that's probably or possibly one of the reasons why Nicodemus, the high or one of the high priests, member of the Sanhedrin, member of the Jewish council, that was both religious government and civic government, came to see Jesus at night. Doesn't say that in the scripture, but he put the scripture in context, and it implies that. The other story it comes out after is the marriage at Cana, where Jesus turned water into wine at his mother's request, and probably a relative. Otherwise, why would mom be involved? But you know, mothers are always trying to get us to do things we don't think we should or don't want to. So, and it's interesting that a leader of the Jews, a leader of the high council, would go at night to see Jesus under the cover of darkness, and we believe that he actually became that night a clandestine follower. Because at the end of the story, at the end of the Gospel of John, Nicodemus helps Joseph of Arimathea take Jesus down off the cross and put him in uh, John of Arimathea's, or Joseph of Arimathea's uh, tomb. And Nicodemus also brings myrrh and frankincense and special herbs to anoint the body, spending a lot of money to do so. So that's also different from the other three Gospels. And maybe we have to find a way to bring the two go or th four Gospels together. Now, with the Romans passage, this happens in the middle of the book, and we know that um, Paul was born around the year five, so he was alive during Jesus' lifetime. We know that he was converted to Christianity, that he met Jesus between the year 33 and 35. And we know that this book was written around the year 55. Might have been as soon as 53, might have been as late as 57, but we believe that 55's a good target. Now, this too, you know, the book of Romans is fascinating. It's different. It is probably Paul's magnum opus, but it was never meant to be a systematic theology, never meant to be taught in schools. It was a book from Paul's heart to try to tell the Romans what he thought they needed to know. He had never been to Rome yet. He didn't start the church there. But there were Romans in that church, not just Jews who were converting to Christianity. We know that Romans were anathema, they were taboo, they were unholy, they were goyim, they were the oppressors. And yet, Paul felt the need to talk to them about inheriting the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Because if we don't inherit that, we will go the other way don't want to do that. So listen then. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you were a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. 
Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. So do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it blows. Excuse me. Or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel and yet do not understand these things? For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And from the book of Romans, or to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may be glorified with him. The word of God. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Amen. So princesses and princes, you are. If you have been baptized by water and the Holy Spirit and believe in God. Anybody know the names of the Disney princesses? No, Cinderella. I'm sorry? Which ones? Snow White? Who's the name of the princess in Frozen? Anna. Anna. See, but we don't forget Moana, the Polynesian princess, Belle. Um, now, since I believe that Disney bought out Pixar, we also have Fiona. Now, Fiona is my favorite princess because she's an ogre. And I don't know any person who is perfect who doesn't have at least a little bit of ogre in them. And Shrek, God bless his tiny little heart, that ogre is also a prince, even though he tries not to be. They are human. You know, more human in some ways than the uh, Anne Hathaway and the Princess Diaries. More human in many ways than Buttercup in the uh, Princess Bride. You know, hey, 
I have a 22-year-old daughter. I've seen all these movies. But I, th I think Buttercup, um, Mia Thermopolis, and Fiona were our favorites. Maybe because we're so human too. I don't know. Maybe because we are ogres at heart and try not to be. But the thing that catches me in these passages is becoming an heir to the kingdom of God. An heir to the kingdom of God. With Jesus, who taught us to pray our Father. Who said, you know, God is our Father, and that means that you are my brothers. And, well, he didn't say that we were his brothers and sisters so much, but he implied it. And if we are born of baptism, the confession of sins and water, if we allow the Holy Spirit to come down upon us and fill us and surround us and rest on us and within us, we are heirs to the kingdom of God. Which means we are princes and princesses of heaven. And where would you rather be a prince or princess of? Earth or heaven? I rest my case. Now, one of the things, two of the things that jumped out at me. Adoption. Spirit of adoption through Jesus and our faith in Jesus. We are adopted. Now, I've known a lot of adopted people, men and women, and the ones who seem to be the most healthy emotionally and spiritually in this life are the ones who hold on to the fact that they were chosen. They were chosen. Chosen by their mother and their father. Chosen by God to be adopted. Wow. Imagine. Yeah, it's such a powerful message. I have had friends who didn't understand that and who were a mess. But once they really came to grips with the fact that they were chosen, that they were wanted and loved, when so many of their friends really weren't wanted, you know, it made a huge difference. You know, it, my parents loved me dearly, but they weren't planning for me, so they didn't know they wanted me until after I was born. You know, a lot of us were that way, you know. We weren't planned for, but, after we were born, they figured out, wow, I choose you to be my child. And that is a powerful message. To know that we are loved so much that God would give his only child for our sakes, that Jesus would willingly die for us, and yet in the transaction, God gets a whole lot of children back. Gets Jesus back, and he gets each and every one of us. And that's a blessing, isn't it? That's a miracle. That's, praise God. You know? So, now, Jesus on the cross, according to some of the Gospels, said, called God Abba. Now, I need to restart the camera, I think. Oh, 39. There we go. Praise be to God, I remembered. Anyway, so in this scripture, on the cross, Jesus cries out, Abba, Abba. Here. Paul says, calls God, Abba. And you know what Abba means in Hebrew? Daddy. 
Jews do not refer to God as daddy. It's considered disrespectful, not proper, not appropriate. But here in the scriptures, in this scripture, even Jesus calls, you know, God daddy. And Paul calls God daddy. And he writes that to the Romans, saying, we have to look up to daddy, the one who loves us and adopts us and plays with us, the one in whose arms we are truly safe. Not all of us have an earthly parent in whose arms we are truly safe. So it's hard for some to imagine what it's like. But for those who can get over the childhood dramas, coming to God and knowing true love, true safety, true welcome, an invitation, it's a blessing. It is such a blessing. Um, so, if there's one thing we should be happy for, if there's one thing we should thank God for and thank Jesus and open to the Holy Spirit, it is that we are adopted by a good and loving parent, a daddy, someone who loves us and cares for us more than anyone or anything in the world and will do anything for us. Just think, he gave us Jesus, but he got Jesus back and us. For this and for many blessings, this Memorial Day, I give God thanks for this and all the many blessings and all the people who laid down their lives for us, I give God thanks and blessings. For us, we have a home. I don't know anybody who's ready to go there yet. I'm certainly not myself. But we have a home where we will be safe and loved, cared for, and we will be with our daddy. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us come together in prayer. Almighty God, maker of all, with joy we give thanks for all your goodness. We praise you for your love that has created and sustained us this day and to this day. And for the gift of your Christ who brings us into covenant with you and with all your people of faith. Help us to treasure your gifts and to show our thankfulness by lives wholly given to your service. We pray for your church that you have redeemed by the sacrifice of Jesus. Give it its pastors and ministers filled with your spirit strength to serve by the guidance of of your word, perfected in love and in compassion, and establish it in the faith of your saints. Unite all your people that one holy church may bear witness to you and your glory. We pray that you will move our nation toward the justice of your peace. We pray for our state and local leaders to be people with integrity, 
Purge from us all hatred and prejudice and fill within us your love that even in our dealings with the other nations of the earth, we may be servants of peace and truth and justice. Bless our homes with the joy of your presence. Strengthen our covenants of family and faith that together we may show your praise in our world through deeds of, and words of love and compassion, especially with those who are alone and lonely. Let your grace be seed in seed time and harvest, in labor and business, in leisure and rest, in arts and culture of our people. Comfort those in sorrow and in need who are experiencing sickness or adversity. Bring mercy to those whose death draws near. Bring consolation to those in mourning and to give your peace. For these and all our prayers we bring to you in the name of Jesus our Christ. And now, with the boldness of children of God, we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, our brother, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God is the giver of life. Christ is the gift sent to share our life. And the Holy Spirit, the power that enables us to continue in generosity, justice, and joy. Let us open our hearts and our lives to the God and one another in the form of our time, talent, or treasure. Gracious and loving Jesus, accept these gifts and use them for your service. Amen. And please join in singing Amazing Grace, number 547.
And please join me in the common commission. Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, but strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all persons, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm.